Psalm 46, reading from verse 1. Psalm 46, reading from verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Sometimes God allows flare-ups in your life just to show up. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Somebody wants to ask, where is God? Look at your trouble. Where is God? Go check out your trouble. He's right in there, fixing it, working on it, straightening you up, setting you up, pulling you together. God is our strength and, and refuge, a very present help in trouble. Say, therefore, will I not fear? I will not fear because I understand that God is my strength. I understand that God is my refuge. I understand God is my eye tower. I understand God is where I run into, is who I run into. I understand that God is on my side. I understand that God will never forsake me. He will never leave me. God will never walk away from me. I know my friends might walk away from me. I know my co-workers might walk away from me. I know my neighbors might walk away from me. Sometimes my family will walk away from me. But God is my strength and are my refuge. And when I am in trouble, that is the particular time it shines and it shows up. God is my refuge and my strength, my very present help in time of trouble. God shows up when you are having flare-ups. God shows up when you are struggling. God shows up when you are in pain. He will never leave you he will never forsake you. He will never abandon you. God is not a fear weather God that only show up when things are working good, that only show up when you are cute and you have it all together, that only show up when you have money and you can buy something for me or give me a gift, or that shows up when you are influential and you are in a position to help me. God is not that God that only show up when you can help me. God show up when you have nobody to help you. The Bible says he is the present help. He is the help that is present when things are tough. He is the help that is present when things are difficult is the help that is present when it's frustrating, when it's discouraging, when you're about to give up, when you're holding on by a strand, by a string. God is the present help in time of trouble. He's your refuge. He's your high tower. He's your strong tower. He's your navigator. He will direct you. He will instruct you. He's your navigator. He's your pathfinder. He helps you find your way. He directs you. He guides you. He's your excursion. He's always there guiding you, supporting you, staying behind you. He doesn't leave you by yourself. He doesn't abandon you. He doesn't walk away from you. When things are the most difficult, that is when God shows up. So that when you find yourself in a place of pain, in a place of frustration, in a place of disappointment, in a place of discouragement, in a place of abuse, God is present right there. The Bible says it's your refuge and it's your strength that shows up when you need him most. Is your present help in time of trouble. That's why the Bible says, Rejoice not over me, my enemy, because if I fall, I shall rise again. Because my God is present when I fall. Because my God is present when I stumble. Because my God is present when I make mistakes. Because my God is present when I'm about to be fired. My God is present when I'm about to be laid off. My God is present when I'm about to lose that contract. My God is present when I'm about to lose somebody dear and very important to me. My God is present when I'm about to receive that negative report. My God is present when everybody walks away. That is when he shows up. When everybody's walking away, he's walking towards you. The Bible says, is your present help. In time of trouble, 
He sees your pain. He sees your frustration. He knows your cry. He knows your weeping. He knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you are pretending as if you are sleeping while you are not sleeping. He knows when you are soaking your pillow with your tears. He knows everything about you. After he has known and found out everything about you, the Bible says he still sticks with you. He's a present help in time of trouble. He's the one that sticks closer than a brother. God is the present help. In time of trouble, many of you, many of us have been disappointed by friends and families. And many of us have been disappointed by confidence. We have been betrayed. We have been stabbed in the back. But here I tell you, rejoice because God is with you. See, and therefore will not fear. We will not fear. Though the art be removed. The art be removed speaks to things unstable. Everything shaking. There is an earthquake. There is a financial earthquake. There is a spiritual earthquake. There is a marital earthquake. There is nothing stable. Everything is unstable. What you used to trust and believe is no longer available. See, even though the art is removed, even though the things that used to give you confidence and hope are gone, say, though the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea, Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. Somebody is getting help this morning. I say, somebody is getting help this morning. I say, your help is here this morning. I say, your help is here this morning. You are not here for anybody. You are here for God. And if you are here for God, you are in a good place because God is here for you. He says, he says and she shall help her. And when? Right early. How many of you understand that God is always on time? God has never had one tardiness. God has never been late. Doesn't usually come at your own schedule because God doesn't work by your schedule. He has his own schedule. But he's always there on time. He's faithful. He's early. In fact, he comes before time. He comes early. If God needs to show up at 12, he shows up at 11.55. He shows up a little bit early. Earlier than you can imagine, God shows up on time. See, God did not stop them from throwing Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego inside the fire. Anybody that is looking at that situation will say, oh, God is late. Here he goes again. But God was much, much early waiting for them inside the fire. God was busy hanging out in the fire waiting for them to show up. They came late. They, got late to the, they came late to the party. God was there. Jesus was hanging out and saying, hey, guys, I'm here. Hi. But when they got to the fire, Jesus was standing waiting for them. To the extent that when the king saw them, they said, wait a minute. We threw three people inside the fire. How come there is a fourth person in the fire? Wait a minute. He's not just a person. He looks like the son of God. Duh, duh, yeah, he's God himself, son of God. That was him. He was there waiting for them while they were struggling, while they were complaining, while they were wondering, while they were saying, well, God is not going to let us burn. God said, you will burn. Come here. You won't burn. I'll be there. You will burn, but you won't burn. You're going to the fire but you come out looking cute the fire promoted them the fire elevated them the fire took them from being slave to being somebody to be reverend and respected it is through going through the fire that made them God their elevation without the fire they will remain slave God has to take them through the fire to get the attention of Nebuchadnezzar without the fire they were ordinary The fire was designed to show them off. The fire was designed to celebrate them. The fire was designed to put them in a place that the king could not have put them on his own. The fire was designed to take them to a place of honor and majesty. The fire was designed to make them a celebrity so that they can celebrate them. So God, even in that situation, was early. God was early with Daniel. 
when they were about to throw Daniel in the, uh, in, in, in the lion's pit. In the lion's pit, God was already there tying up the mouth of the lion. How many of you have seen those cowboys that, 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 that when they want to, uh, uh, when, when they want to, what do you call it? Whatever. You know what I'm talking about. You know, they want to catch the cow, you know. You know, no, they, 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 they throw that uh, rope and, and the cow is running, but they just throw it and it's, for some strange reason, they always catch them. So God was doing that in the pit while Daniel was hanging out with the king. See, if Daniel has not shown up in the pit, he wouldn't have found God. If Daniel had not shown up in the pit, the king would not have discovered God in that level, at that place, in that place of majesty. So while they were planning to mess up Daniel, God was already in the pit waiting for Daniel. God knew all along that Daniel has to come to the pit to take him to a place that he couldn't have got into by himself. So God went to the pit, hanging out with the lion, tying up their mouth, holding them down. By the time Daniel showed up, God was already there. He suddenly found out that the lion that was supposed to devour him and destroy him became his pillow. How many of you have ever experienced sleeping with live lion before? Using them as pillow. That must be the most expensive, cute, succulent, soft pillow you ever use. So when the king showed up and said, Daniel, has your God delivered you? Daniel said, yeah, God was here before I got here. And he sent his angel to tie the mouth of the lion. The lion that the world designed to destroy you. God designed to celebrate you. The lion that the world designed to demote you, God designed to elevate you. He is the present help in time of trouble. Let nobody ever convince you that God has abandoned you. Because he's not a man to lie. He's not the son of man to change his mind. But he is the present help in time of of trouble. God help her. God shows up and he shows up right early. Said the Eden rage, the kingdom were moved. He uttered his voice. The heart melted. Maybe you are going through a flare up in your life today. Maybe you are going through a rage. Maybe you are going through a difficult time and a stressful time and things are so confusing you don't even know what to do anymore. Maybe you've prayed and you thought you prayed enough and you wonder why things are not working the way you planned. God has sent me here to tell you today that God is available and is waiting for you in your trouble. That this too will pass. That this trouble is designed to elevate you, to promote you. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5 verse 10. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 and 11 says, But the Lord God, but God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, shall make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, say to you, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. After you have suffered a while, after you have suffered a while, you are only permitted to suffer for a short time. After you have suffered a while, you need the suffering to be refined. The suffering is the fire designed to elevate you, to purify you, to purge you, to set you up to a place where you cannot get by yourself. After you have suffered a while, after you have suffered a while, God never said you will not suffer. He says your suffering is going to be a short while. Then it will perfect you. You see, the suffering leads to the perfection. The suffering leads to the establishment. The suffering leads to the strengthening. The, su the suffering leads to the settling. After you have suffered a while, John chapter 16, verse 21. John chapter 16, verse 21. A woman, when she's in travail, when she's in labor, has sorrow. A woman, when she's in labor, has... Is there any woman that's ever had labor here before? Is there any woman that's had, ever had children here before? You've ever gone through labor pain before? You know that it's not pretty. 
A woman, when she's in travail, had sorrow. Because her hour is come. Somebody's hour has come today. Some of you are going through a difficult time for a while now because your time is here. Now, if you don't understand your time is here, you are going to lose it. If you don't understand your time is here, you're going to mess, it, mess things up. He says the reason why you are suffering through a travail or a difficult time, a frustrating time, a confusing time, you can't put it together. It doesn't make sense. It's not fun. It's not exciting. You can't even place your finger on it. This is falling apart. That is falling apart. Everything. What is going on? It's because your hour is come. Say, but as soon as she is delivered, somebody say delivered. Somebody say delivered. Your delivery is here. Somebody shout, my delivery is here. Somebody shout, my delivery is here. Somebody shout, I'm about to get delivered right now. But as soon as she's delivered of the child, she remembered no more the anguish. She remembered no more the pain for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again. And your eyes shall rejoice. And your joy no man can take from you. Your joy no man can take from you. Your joy no man can take from you. These things are spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheers. I have overcome the world. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 14. Isaiah 54, verse 14. Say, in righteousness shall thou be established. In righteousness shall thou be established. I'm going to come back to that Isaiah 54, 14. I want to hold your finger there if you have a... You have that in your Bible in that on that page. In righteousness shall thou be established. I want you now go to 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 Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. Proverbs 18, 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous. Somebody say righteous. righteous. The name of the Lord is a what? Strong tower. The righteous run into it and are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it. So God expects you to run unto him, into his name. God expects you not to run away from him in time of trouble, in time of insecurity, in time of frustration. God expects you to run into him because inside him, that's where you find safety. Say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, I guess the smart righteous. Because you have a lot of righteous, when they are in trouble, they run away from God. They stop coming to church. They stop praying. They stop fasting. They stop giving. They stop fellowshipping. They stop confessing. They stop believing. Say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into him. When the enemy wants to wipe you out, he wants to isolate you. God, God has to bring you out of that isolation to help you. The devil has to isolate you to destroy you. When you understand the things of God, you suddenly realize that God has your life in the palm of his hand. That what you call disappointment is God's appointment. That what you call setback is God's setup. Are you following me? Do you understand what I've said? Those three Hebrew boys had to go to the fire to get the promotion they got. Daniel has to go into the lion's pit to get the promotion he got. Without those events, they were nobody. Are you listening to me? Without those events, those circumstances, those situations in their life, they were no... So the Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. God expects you as a righteous to run into his name. It is foolishness for the righteous not to run into the name of the Lord, not to run to God in time of trouble. Say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into that name, run to God, and they find safety. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. 
So he's saying that Isaiah chapter 54, he says, In righteousness shall thou be established. You see, righteous, righteousness. Righteous is those that have picked up or put on the righteousness of God. The righteous are those that have put on the righteousness of God. So he said, in that righteousness shall thou be what? Established. He said, thou shall be far from oppression in that righteousness. For thou shalt not fear from terror. For it shall not come near thee, behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather against you shall fall for your sake. Behold, I have created the smith that blew the coal in the fire, and that bring forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you, not just the one that have risen, even the one that will rise, that's a comprehensive insurance policy. All encompassing, all covering. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment thou shalt condemn. Why? Because this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord and the righteousness of me, said the Lord. If you stay in righteousness, the Bible says you'll be far from oppression. If you stay in righteousness, the Bible says you will need not to fear terror. If you stay in righteousness, the Bible says you will not worry about those gathering against you because they shall fail and they shall fall. If you are in righteousness, the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. If you are in righteousness, the Bible says every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you have the authority and the ability and the instruction and the command to condemn. The Bible says if you stay in righteousness, you have an heritage of God that immune you against the works of the enemy. If you stay in righteousness, you can run into his name and you find safety. A thousand will fall by your side, ten thousand by your right hand side, and it will not touch you. With your eyes, you will simply behold the reward of the wicked. You see people struggling, you see people failing, you see people losing it, and there you are standing, operating in peace that surpasses all understanding. In other words, you will be so much at peace, so much blessed, that you begin, you begin to worry that you are not worried because what should worry you is not worrying you. What should stress you out is not stressing you out. What is frustrating others, what should frustrate you is not frustrating you because you are in the name of the Lord. You are in righteousness. Righteousness purchased for you, guarantees for you safety. So the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are saved. No weapon for against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you, you shall condemn. In righteousness, the righteous of the Lord, God is their refuge and God is their strength. So when the flare-up starts, when the craziness starts, when the foolishness starts, you can stand there and beat it down like a drum because you are righteous and you are in the name of the Lord. So things happening around you are not expected to manipulate you. You are not supposed to run like they are running. You are not supposed to stress as they are stressing. You are not supposed to get frustrated as they are frustrated. Because you are a righteous. Look at what it says. Psalm 34 verse 19. Many are the affliction of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him from them all. How many of you have a movie you really love? And then you watched it the first time. And then you watch it the second time. And then you watch it the third time. And then you watch it the fourth time. And then you start to record it on your TV. Okay, some of you don't know what TV is. On your DVR. And then you went ahead and buy the DVD. And then you watch it again. And then you watch it again. 
and then you watch it again, and somebody make a mistake to come and watch it with you, and you are telling him the movie before he saw the movie, you are telling him, oh, watch, it's going to kill him now. Oh, it's going to kick him now. Oh, no, don't worry, it's not going to die. It's going to make it. He's the actor, he's the lead. Oh, don't worry. But he's oh, just relax. Because you know the end of the story. You've seen it several times. You've seen the movie before. You are not stressed about anything. Others are panicking. Others, someone said, please don't tell me the end. I won't tell you the end because I know the end. Are you following me? He says, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him from them all. Every affliction that comes against you is going to be the dust. Every stress, every frustration, every confusion, every problem that ever confronts you is going to suffer defeat. Why? Because you are a righteous. I feel bad for your enemies. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm going to close now, but let me quickly say this to you. God will allow flare-ups in your life to lift you up. God compares us to gold. You know, if you look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 says, But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. These flare-ups are training moment not necessarily initiated of God, but used of him anyway. God was not the one that set the fire for Shudrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but God used the fire to promote them. God was not the one that put the lion together for Daniel, but God used the lion and the pit to promote him. Are you, are you listening to me? So the Bible says that in the house of God, there are vessels of gold. And one thing about gold is that gold has no value until it's refined. You will be underpricing gold in its unrefined state. You will be underestimating gold before it gets refined. You will be selling gold at an incredibly cheap price before going through the fire. For fire to show up in gold or on gold, it means the refiner has decided to raise the level of the gold. For the gold to enter into the fullness of its potential, it has to go through fire. Those fires are what we call flare-ups. Those are what we call crashes and crashes and, and conflict and crisis. Oh, I'm in crisis again. That's flare-ups. That's fire. Everything is falling apart. That is fire. Here we go again. That is fire. Those crises, those crashes, those conflicts are fire that God has set in place to celebrate you, to bring out the best in you. You know what the Bible says? I, it's something very interesting in the Bible. I, I always look at this scripture and it just amazes me. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. You never know who is a real man until they go through fire. You never know who is a real woman until they go through fire. You never know who is tough, who is strong until they go through fire. Anybody can give himself a nickname. Or oh, the, the Terminator. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can just give them instead any name. The incredible, you know? you know. Just any name. But let's get him through fire and see. Look at what the Bible says. It, 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 says, it says in Proverbs 24 verse 10, If thou faint, if you faint in the days of adversity, your strength is small. Adversity is designed, adversity is designed to identify you. 
Adversity will locate where you are. Adversity will let us know whether you are the real deal or you are the raw deal or you are the fake deal. Adversity tells us if you know Jesus. Adversity tells us if you will serve him only for good, for stuff, or you serve him for real. Adversity will tell us if you are like Paul that says, what shall separate me from the love of Christ? God never said you will not go through stuff. In fact, God guarantees that you go through stuff. He said, but be of good cheer as I have overcome the world. Since when you pass through fire, Isaiah chapter 43, I will be in the fire with you. When you pass through water, I will be in the water with you. So that the fire will not burn you. So that the water will not drown you. Say, because you are precious in my sight, I have made you honorable. The fire is designed to bring out the best in you. The fire is designed to make you a champion. You have to fight to win. You can't win by default. For the fact that all your enemy quit does not mean you get the belt. You still have to fight. In the kingdom of God, there are no honorary champions. Championship is not bestowed on you. You earn it. That's why the Bible says we do not have an high priest who is not touched by the feeling of our infirmity, but we have one that was tempted in every way, yet without sin. If God allows you to go through trouble, it's because God is trying to bless you. Because God will never allow you to be tempted more than you can bear. Isaiah 48 verse 10. Isaiah 48 verse 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Look at what the Bible says. I have refined you, not with silver, but I have chosen you. I chose you in the furnace of affliction. Say, for my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted, and I will not give my glory unto another? You are not going through trouble because God hates you. You are going through trouble because God loves you. Okay, let me try that again. I think that just passed over. Some people said, you are not going through trouble because God hates you. You are going through trouble because God loves you. And God knows that you are better than that. And God is looking for a way to promote you. So God is allowing troubles so that you can triumph. So that he can justify the blessings he's about to bestow on you. I want to challenge you this morning. That trust God. Hold on to his everlasting hand. Everything around you might shake, might be shaking right now. Stick with God. Walking away from God from serving God, from the word of God, from prayer, from fellowship, from confessing of your faith, is the enemy's strategy to defeat you. In fact, there are five main things you have to do to win all the time. Quickly, number one, you have to pray your way out of trouble. If you are not praying, you are playing. If you are not a prayer, you are a player. If you are not a prayer, you are a player. There are many players in the church. A praying Christian is a winning Christian. Those that fight the battles on their knees, they win the victory in the spirit. The Bible says pray without season. Pray without season. When you stop praying, you stop winning. Number two, praise your way out of trouble. Praise your way out of trouble. 
If you don't know how to shout, I are in trouble, you are in trouble. If you don't know how to shout, hallelujah, in trouble, you are in trouble. The devil can take your money, but you shouldn't be able to take your hallelujah. The devil can take your car, but you shouldn't be able to take your hallelujah. The devil can take your high heel shoes, but you shouldn't be able to take your hallelujah. The devil can take your wig and your dentures, your fake teeth, but you shouldn't be able to take your hallelujah. The devil can take anything but not your hallelujah. If you stop shouting hallelujah, the day you lose your hallelujah, you lose the battle. Okay, let me go on because that's getting too deep. <laughs> you can lose your friend, but don't lose your hallelujah. You can lose your job, but don't lose your hallelujah. You can lose your heart, but don't lose your hallelujah. You can lose your car, don't lose your hallelujah. You, your team can lose, don't lose your hallelujah. You can lose your cable and your internet, don't lose your hallelujah. You can lose your insurance, but don't lose your hallelujah. You can lose your cat and your dog, but don't lose your... In fact, you can lose your husband, but don't lose your hallelujah. You can lose your girlfriend. Trust me, there are many fish in the ocean. Don't lose your hallelujah. Don't kill yourself over her. She's gone along. She's getting along with another man. Thank God for your life and shout hallelujah. And God will bring you a fresh new girl. Don't lose your hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you lose. You better don't lose your hallelujah. You praise your way out of trouble. So when the flare up shows up, you shout hallelujah. Confuse the devil. Kick him in the rear hand. Beat him up. You praise your way out of trouble. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, three kings decided to invade Judah. Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, they decided to show up and flare up and cause confusion and destroy Judah. And the Bible told us as they began to pray and they fast and God began to tell them, look, you are not going to fight in this battle. This is the Lord's battle, but this is what I want to do. Gather musicians, gather singers, gather worshippers and go into the battle celebrating and dancing. Many of you are fighting battle. You have no business fighting. Many of you are so tired because you don't know when to stop and you don't know when to keep quiet. You just keep going on and on. Many of you, you only have one gear. Go and that's it. You don't know how to stop. But God is telling some folks here to calm down, relax, smart, get some Kool-Aid and begin to praise God because it's about to win the battle for you. You can lose everything, but don't lose your praise. Don't lose your praise. You pray yourself out of trouble. The Bible says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. When you are in trouble, you pray. When you are tired, you pray. When you are stressed out, you pray. When you are confused, you pray. Reach, read the Bible. Every time the apostles get in trouble, they do two things. They pray and they praise. They don't start all the petition and, and start crying. and No, no, no. They pray. Arrested, they pray. About to be killed, they pray. Accused falsely, they pray. And then they pray. You learn to pray your way out of trouble. You learn to praise yourself out of trouble. Praise God out of trouble. Number three, you learn to speak yourself out of trouble. Many of, you are, many of us are speaking ourselves into trouble. You know what the Bible says? Let me read Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. I read from verse 20. Look at this. A man's belly. A man's belly. Somebody, where is your belly? Show me your belly. I don't mean you take off your clothes. I mean, just... Put your hand on your belly. Amen. Right? This is your belly. A man, this, this, your, this is not your belly. This is your belly. A man's belly shall be satisfied with what? Fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips. Shall he be what? You are going to be filled, satisfied with what comes out of your mouth. Many people are having trouble because they are speaking trouble. How are you doing? Not too bad. So it's bad. Man, you are killing me, man. 
He's going to kill you very soon. I'm struggling. Man, I'm struggling. The struggle continued. But I enjoyed. Things are so bad. Have you heard people saying that? Things are so bad. Look at what the Bible says. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his leaves shall he be filled. Then look at verse 21. Dead and life are in the power. Is he in the hand of the devil? Is he in the hand of the demons? Is he in the hand of Satan? Where is it? Where is it? Whose tongue? Okay, you guys have been quiet now. This is a good time to talk. Whose tongue? Death and life are in your own tongue. And look at what it says. And they that love it shall eat the food thereof. Your words create your world. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. For he that will love life and see good days. Look at what it says. 1 Peter 3, 10. For he. How many of you love life? How many of you want to see good days? Look at what it says. Let him do what? Let him do what? Somebody shout refrain. Somebody shout refrain. Many people talk too much. Say, if you want, if you love life and you want to see good days, look how it says. It says, refrain your tongue from evil. Some people, they like to talk when things are very bad because they want everybody to pity them. Oh, man, I'm having pain in my knees right now. And before you got here, it was pain in my thigh. And last night, it was pain in my waist. And I can guarantee you, in two minutes, it's going to be pain in my ankle. Because the pain is moving <laughs> downwards. <laughs> they project pain. They project frustration. Oh, well, the doctor said I'm dying in 30 days. But where I'm feeling, I don't think I'm going to make it to 15. <laughs> the way they are laying people off a job, you know, I better file for unemployment before they even fire me. I have my form already prepared. My unemployment form is prepared so that once I get the pink slip, I submit it because I don't want to lose any paycheck. Look at what the Bible says. So let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no evil, no girl. You have to learn to pray your way out of trouble. So as we start the 14 days fasting, today we meet every single day starting tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. Come and pray. Don't say you are too busy. You can't be too busy for prayer. If you are not here for prayer tomorrow, make sure you have a good reason to tell God. I'm tired is not a good reason. Because those that wait on the Lord shall. So if you need strength, you should come and pray when you are tired. Because those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. See, that's how you, you, you behave as a Christian. That's how you practice Christianity. Look at what he says. He says, he says. he says they should refrain their tongue from evil and their tongue from speaking girl. You pray yourself out of trouble, out of flare-ups. You praise yourself out of flare up. You confuse the devil so much praising God in time of need or frustration when he thinks he should be complaining. You begin to praise God. You don't lose your hallelujah. You start, listen to this, you start speaking life. I'm blessed. I may not feel good right now, but... I am healed in Jesus' name. For surely he borne my grief, he carried my sorrow. By his stripes I am healed. Yet we did esteem him strictly. Spirit of God afflicted. He was wounded for my transgression, pushed for my iniquity. By his stripes I am healed. They might be laying everybody off a job. They can't lay me off. They can't help but not lay me off. Why they are demoting others? They are promoting me. Everybody is losing their house and buying new houses. You begin to speak life to yourself, not death. 
You can't come to church and tell us to pray concerning your husband, but you curse him out all day at, at home. You're speaking dead to him at home, but you're asking us to pray life in church. You can't say, Pastor, my son, pray for him, oh, and then you call him all kind of name at home. You use the F word on him, the S word on him, the B word on him, the H word on him. You come up with Z word that we don't even know on him. You speak life, not dead. Are you following me? Number four, you pray yourself out of trouble. You pray, praise yourself out of trouble. You speak yourself out of trouble. Number four, you give yourself out of trouble. You give yourself out of trouble. Remember the story of Noah? Noah just came out of the flood. You know the first thing Noah did? He gave a sacrifice. God was so stunned about Noah's behavior, God made a vow, I will never destroy the earth with flood again, just because of what he did. Because we are talking about somebody having limited animal and still giving them to God. Because the world was just wiped out. Didn't you see Abraham? The Bible said, give me your child, your only child, the one you love. He gave himself out of poverty, out of frustration, out of destruction. He gave himself out of trouble. Didn't you see Jesus Christ? He gave his life. He gave everything. For God so loved what that he gave. God gave his son. Jesus gave himself. The only reason Jesus is the savior of the earth today, of the world today, is because he gave himself. If you don't know how to give, you will always struggle. If you don't know how to give, you will always struggle. That is spiritual or whatsoever a man sow, that shall he reap. In order, in order for David to stop the plague, he gave. In order for Noah to stop God from further destruction in that sense, in that way, he gave. In order for Abraham to connect fully with the covenant God has promised him, he gave. In order for Jesus to save the world and become the, the Messiah, the Christ, he gave. He gave. He gave. Perhaps there is he that scatter yet increase. There is he that withhold more than his meat. Yet yeah, tend toward poverty. Number five, you fellowship yourself out of trouble. You fellowship yourself out of trouble. You remember what I said to you at the beginning? The enemy has to isolate you to destroy you. Psalm 92 verse 12. Look at it. The righteous shall flourish. Psalm 92 verse 12. The righteous. Who? 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 Let's try that again. Who? How many righteous are here? If you are a righteousness of God, if you are a righteous child of God, the righteous, look at it, shall flourish like what? Is it on the screen? Okay, this is English, right? So let's read it. One, two, three, go. So the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Verse 13. Go to the next verse, please. Want to go? Okay, let's try that again. Verse 12 says, the righteous shall what? You see the word flourish? Do you see the word flourish? The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Then look at verse 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall do what? You see flourish, flourish? The righteous shall flourish those that be planted. In order for the righteous to flourish and grow like the cedar in the Lebanon, they have to be what? Planted in the house of, in the court, in the house of God. Look at verse 14. They shall still bring forth fruit. Now, that explains why Sarah had a child at 90 and Abraham had a child at 100. Because they are righteous who are planted in the house of the Lord. 
the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. They shall grow like the cedar of Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. They shall still bring forth fruit in their old age. They shall be fat. And this is not American fat. This is good fat. It means they shall be buoyant. They shall have more than enough. They, they shall have exceeding abundantly above all they can ever ask or think. This is a good fat. They shall be fat and flourishing. Rise up on your feet. I've talked to you today. I hope you got something today. You pray yourself out of trouble. You praise yourself. You never lose your hallelujah. You never lose your drive to pray. It doesn't matter how tough it is. How tough it is. The house of my God, my house, father's house shall be called the house of prayer. You pray yourself out of trouble. You praise yourself out of trouble. You what? You speak yourself out of trouble. Not speak yourself into. That's why we make you confess so much. That's why we are doing that. God is able song today. I say, keep saying he's able. He's able. Because I want you to say it so much until you break every chain holding you down. You speak yourself out of trouble. You give yourself out of trouble. You give memorial seed. Seed that means something. Seed that is connected to request. You fellowship yourself out of trouble. An isolated child of God is a child of God that's about to wither. Pray, praise, give, speak, fellowship. Lift up your hands. Father, we thank you this morning. Father, we've spoken your word to your people. Do an unusual work here today. Thank you, Father. Let this word begin to penetrate your heart and bring forth transformation. In Jesus' name.